Yeah. Moving pictures was a mixed blessing to me in retrospect, in, for me personally in my life. A lot of strange people came out of the woodwork. There was so much attention on us at that time that, that was transitory. You know, generally, we were pretty private, and I think movie pictures was the turning point when there was a lot more pressure from fans and from people wanting a piece of you or believing they were connected to you in some other way. There was a time when we first started getting recognized that I got a little touchy about it. And I remember I started thinking about this thing about fame and how you deal with it. That was kind of an epiphany. And I said to myself, I'm going to go where I want to go. And if somebody comes up to me and he's nice to me and wants an autograph, I got time for him. It's no big deal. Getty, right? That's right. Oh my god, that's Getty? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm just Wait, That's it. No problem. That's it. One is Sorry. two. One is to Shawnee. Me to get your way yeah, the first one's to Shawnee. And the next one's to Troy. Okay, that's what I promise. I'm so sorry. For you. you want his too? Yes. He's the leader of the group. <laughs> I can walk around the city and get recognized from time to time. Getty more so, he's got a very distinctive look about him. But generally people are very polite. They don't want too much from you. I understand that these are your fans that just love what you do. There's been a moment in their lives where your music has been so important to them that to take a couple of minutes and just chat, shake a hand or a hug or something, it's not a big deal. I remember when I met them, I was just struck by Getty Lee and Lifeson's friendship. It seemed like they had a real deep bond, real playful and sort of goofy. It just seemed like there was a lot of joy there, a lot of, a lot of genuine fun. And then I turned the corner, and then I saw the master, Neil Peart. He had sort of a different vibe going, just as focused, but a brewing intensity, little wisps of darkness. And Neil has a real struggle with fans, and it's not a personal thing. It's a shyness thing. He's not able to be as relaxed around strangers as Alex or I am. You know, he doesn't mean to hurt anyone's feelings by it. He's not trying to be rude. He's just not comfortable. OK, I was the world's biggest Who fan as a kid. I never dreamed of trying to find their hotel and knocking on their door or interfering in their lives in any way. That's, I don't understand. I love being appreciated. Being respected is awfully good. But anything beyond that just creeps me out. You know, any sense of adulation is just, like, so wrong. I got a chance to go meet Neil Peart, and I got brought into a room, and I started to tell him, hey, I'm the hugest fan ever, and I got sort of the Neil Peart cold shoulder, and the security guard removed me from the room. It was a weird, uncomfortable situation. I love Neil Peart, even though he totally blacklisted me. <laughs> but I would understand, like, if I was Neil Peart and I walked in the room, I would probably want to remove me, too. <laughs> Neil was right, very intense man, but, very, you know, his line, I can't pretend a stranger is a long-awaited friend, that's Neil. People have a fantasy, I don't want to trample on it, but I also don't want to live it. And people can think that I'm antisocial or a sourpuss or anything. It's really not. It doesn't make me mad, it embarrasses me. The other guys, you know, are obviously comfortable with it, and they do the meets and greets every night, and then fine, so, you know, they can do it. One, two, three.